Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be exploring some old hard drives and I have lots of them here. All kind of mid 90s hard drives making them around 30 years old and given the fact that mechanical hard drives typically according to Google at least have a lifespan of about five to ten years I thought it would be interesting to see just how many of these are still in working order. So let's unpack what we have here. So we have lots of different brands. We've got some Western digital ones. Now on this video, I will be focusing on the Western digital ones because you know, testing uh, all of these drives is pretty time consuming. It's also very boring if I would just make a dry video off of it. So yeah, I thought I'd just go with the caviars in this video and see what kind of issues that I encountered. So yeah, I really think it's cool that uh, all of these magnetic drives are still around. Some of them are actually still working. So yeah, no big surprise there because I do find that that five to 10 year life expectancy of mechanical hard drives isn't really what I have considered to be fact. I mean, I have lots of old hard drives, which are like 20 years old, which are still working. But yeah, goal of this video is to see how these caviars here held up to the test of time. Now we have lots of caviars to go through spanning multiple years. And in the next video, I'll cover the other hard drives. Like I have a couple of Connor ones. I have a couple of Seagates. I also have some quantum uh, hard drives. So yeah, I thought it would be interesting to see how many would still work. And we'll start with these bad boys here. I really love that form factor of these old black Western digital caviar hard drives, the AT compatible intelligent drives. This one is from 1993, a 340 megabyte hard drive as indicated by the model number 2340. The one on the left here is from an old IBM and you can see that there are different uh, characteristics here on the sticker like DCM, CCC, MDL. So we'll also take a look at that. Because although these two drives have the same model number, it's not like all of the parts are interchangeable. Another one we have here is the 1210, a 200 megabyte hard drive, also from 1993. And this is when they started to add a new type of sticker on the hard drives with the little colored banner. I don't really have an idea what the different colors mean, but I do like the aesthetic of these old hard drives. Here again, we have the same model number, 2420, a 400 megabyte hard drive. And this is actually the hard drive that I had in my first computer. Well, it's not actually this one, but it's that model type that I distinctly remember. Moving along, we have these 540 megabyte hard drives, the Caviar 2540s, uh, manufactured in uh, mid-1994. And you know the 90s was actually a pretty exciting time period for uh, PCs in general as there was lots of evolution. Now on all of these hard drives you also have jumper settings. So on these old caviars we have three settings. We have either master, slave or cable select. And it's important that these are set correctly as we will see later on. So yeah, I'm going to start testing in no particular order. So I'm going to be starting with this uh, 500 megabyte hard drive. So yeah, let's take a look. I'm going to be using the Barn Find 486 PC with a brand new IDE uh, flat cable here and see what she does. Now that, my friends, is that typical Western digital caviar initialization sound that I love so much. The hard drive is recognized by the BIOS here, but the system is unable to boot. Now, this message typically arrives from the fact if you have a partition on your hard drive, which is not active. So let's start the system with a floppy drive and we see that we have a stacker on the hard drive as we see this message here and we can actually see some files. Now the partition is indeed not active and only 39% of the hard drive is used. So this 500 megabyte hard drive only has 200 megabyte of usable storage now. 
Now it's not possible to run scan disk when stacker is running, but I did create a backup of the system and I decided to just go ahead and delete the partition. Now notice how the partition is uh, labeled as B, that probably indicates that this was a secondary drive. That's why the partition wasn't set active because it wasn't a boot drive. Now, when I tried to delete that partition, it said me that the volume label did not match, although I did enter B. So at first I thought that there might be a leading space, but the volume label still didn't match. And apparently it was a trailing space in the volume label. So yeah, just a little quirk here in FDisk, which really doesn't show you that information. So yeah, I just created a new partition using the maxable available size and proceeded to format the drive. Now, during that formatting process, uh, MS-DOS format will not only prepare the disk for usage, it will also analyze the entire disk for uh, defects. It will put in a file allocation table, making the drive ready. So formatting a drive is actually a good process to see if there are any issues. And as you can see, there are no bad sectors here. We've got 540 megabytes of disk space. I'll transfer the system files to make it uh, bootable. And then let's hear how the hard drive behaves while copying files. What a lovely sound. So the first drive was okay. Let's go to the second one. Um, now this unfortunately was labeled does not start and I cannot hear anything while the hard drive is plugged in. So I don't hear the spinning sound. The hard drive isn't detected. Uh, you know, sometimes you can kind of make the hard drive work by tapping it with the screwdriver on the side or wiggling it. But this drive seemed to be completely dead. So I wasn't able to continue with it. Now, our third 2550 Western Digital Caviar does start, but it doesn't want to boot. So despite the fact that it is recognized as the master hard drive, when the PC starts, it simply hangs at this post screen. Now, if you look at the partitions, we can see that there is an active partition and we can also see that the system files are present. Now, normally this drive should boot. I also did a scan disk and I did a complete surface scan and there wasn't any issue with this hard drive. So the only issue with this hard drive is that it doesn't boot. And when I tried the hard drive on a different computer, this Athlon XP that I had on my desk, I did notice that the hard drive was detected successfully and I was also able to boot from it. So that was pretty strange. Now, the reason why it was able to boot in this PC is bizarrely enough because this IDE cable was wired incorrectly. As you can see here, the blue connector was connected to the hard drive and the black connector on this IDE cable was connected to the motherboard. Now, this should be the other way around, of course, because on these types of cables, the blue connector goes into the motherboard, the gray connector is for the master and the black connector is for the slave drive. Now, when hooking up this IDE cable correctly, we get the same behavior as with the barn find PC. And and again, the hard drive is detected as the primary master, but in this case, it will fail to boot and it will also hang just like it did on the other PC. And the reason why it's doing that is because you need to configure the drive properly using jumpers. Now, these Western Digital hard drives have uh, jumper settings. As you can see here, between the power connector and the IDE connector, we have uh, three jumper positions, master, slave, and cable select. So normally, by default, none of the three is selected, but you can put this jumper in any of the three positions. Now, if you don't apply the jumper and it's in the neutral position, that means that it's used as a single drive. Now, this is important because on some drives, not all, on some, if you put the drive in the master position and it's used as a single drive, so there's no slave present, then the system will hang. It did so in this particular case for this particular model. I have other caviars which don't exhibit that behavior, but just always remember to put these jumpers in the correct position. Now I actually found a fourth 500 megabyte hard drive here, the same model number, but this time in a different enclosure. The one on the left is from June of 1994. The one on the right is from June 1996. So yeah, big difference between the two. 
Now in both cases, the jumpers weren't set. As you can see on the left one, it is set into a position where it doesn't really enable anything. And the one on the right does have a sticker here with weird sound. So let's listen to this one. Yeah, and that definitely doesn't sound good. The chances that we will be able to get this up and running is pretty slim. It wasn't able to detect the hard drive on the first try, although on the second try I was able to get the auto detection working. But unfortunately, due to the nature of that sound, the disk drive is completely dead. When booting from a floppy disk, FDisk simply reported that it had an error reading the fixed disk. So the story ends there. Okay, so moving to the 400 megabyte hard drives. The one on the left had a sticker here, does not boot, long time to initialize. Whereas the one on the right didn't. So yeah, both of these were created in 1994, 420 megabyte hard drives, the Western Digital Caviar's 2420. Now the reason why the hard drive on the left did not boot was again due to the jumper setting. So I just added the factory default jumper here. I didn't uh, set anything. So this should just work as a single uh, standalone drive. So yeah, let's start them up and see what we have. Now these hard drives were apparently already formatted. So I limited my testing by just doing a scan disk. And both of the drives turned out to be 100% okay. No bad sectors, nothing. So that's really good. Let's copy some files and hear the sound of this hard drive. Now the camera does pick up some extra sound. I don't know if it's coming from the motor or the coils or something, but yeah, I did transfer the system files to the hard drive just to see if it boots correctly. And in fact, it did. So yeah, two working hard drives again from 1994. Now, of course, you could also opt to install a complete version of MS-DOS on these hard drives. I actually ended up doing that. So I prepped one hard drive with the MS-DOS 6.22 installation. And then I just uh, backed up that hard drive onto another computer and then just simply copied all of these files to all of the other hard drives to have them all prepped with a fully working MS-DOS 6.22 setup so that I don't have to go through the hassle of installing MS-DOS using floppy disks on all of these hard drives. But still, it was nice to do that MS-DOS 6.22 install once again on these old computers and old hard drives. Okay, so let's go back in time one year to 1993 with these Western Digital Caviar's 2340 drives, a 340 megabyte hard drive. Judging by the red cross on these drives and the sound that this hard drive is making, this drive was also dead. I mean, it was able to uh, get auto detected. Um, there was a partition on it, although it wasn't formatted. So my guess is that we already attempted to format this at one point, but then gave up because as you can see here on around the 25% mark, the hard drive started making a uh, rather unconventional noise and we got some allocation unit recovery ahead of us. So I gave up on this one as it would take forever to format. So I switched to the next one, which had, you know, equally bad signs here because it wasn't able to detect at all. So I wasn't able to continue with that. And I'm guessing I'm also going to be out of luck with this one from end of 1993, the 1210, a 200 megabyte hard drive jumper setting was set to master. So I'm just going to put this in single drive mode. But when hooking up power, I noticed that the hard drive motor was trying to spin up, but then it shut down again and then it started up again, making this unconventional noise. and it was able to pass the detection process in the BIOS. I did get subsequent error messages on the PC 
while it was posting. So depending on that jumper setting, I either got a primary hard drive error, or in this case, I got a primary HDC failure. Next up is the most recent caviar that I have here from April of 1997, this one gigabyte hard drive, the Caviar 1100. Starts up as you would expect, no issues auto detecting that drive in the BIOS either, but things go south as soon as you start it. So there's no active partition, hence the error message you just saw. But when we try to create a new partition, F-Disk simply hangs as it is unable to create that partition. Now, during that process, obviously, you need to have a working hard drive. So depending on the state of the actual hard drive, this operation can indeed fail, as is the case here. Now, it does appear that I left a little note on this hard drive, bad sectors, meaning that at some point this hard drive was still working, but it had a couple of bad sectors. And this just goes to show how quickly a hard drive like this can deteriorate as all of a sudden now, although the hard drive sounds fine, I'm not even able to create a partition anymore. Now, the last six hard drives that I have here are these Caviar 2850s. And these are 800 megabyte hard drives from 1996. So yeah, definitely curious to see how many hard drives out of this batch will still work. And we'll start with the first one here. So let's start by checking how it sounds. So the hard drive sounds okay and is also automatically detected here as an 800 megabyte hard drive. And apparently this one was already formatted because it booted into this DOS prompt and when I did a scan disk, I didn't find any issues with that hard drive. So that's a pretty good start. So as always, let's copy some files to the hard drive and see how it sounds. Now the next one in the batch has the ominous red cross here, so that doesn't predict a whole lot of good. Notice how this drive transitions from that clicking sound to a normal initialization sound. Now again, this drive was already formatted. It did have some files on the file systems. So apparently in 2021, we were able to put files on it. But when running ScanDisk, it uh, came across all kinds of issues. And when it was time to do the surface scan, quite early on, you could see that during that surface scan, it was kind of stuck here and it kept there indefinitely. So yeah, I'm gonna take my loss on this one and put it on the failed bin. Next one doesn't sound a whole lot better as you can hear. It is not getting detected by the BIOS, so again, another loss. Next one. This one starts. We don't hear any strange noises, but we also don't hear that typical initialization sound that we would expect from a hard drive during the boot up sequence. Now again, this hard drive isn't detected by the system, so again, another loss, unfortunately. Next up, a normal sounding hard drive, the typical initialization sound, so that's all good. Gets detected by the BIOS, all good. But when we do a surface scan, we see a lot of bad clusters here. So this drive already went through an entire formatting or surface scan check, and it did found some bad sectors. And you know, when you have lots of bad sectors like this, the chances are that you will get additional bad sectors on each run. So this seems to be the case here because, you know, as I'm doing this surface scan right now, it has found an additional uh, damaged area of the drive. So I would definitely classify this drive as unreliable and uh, put it in the loss bin. Now on to the final one. It already had a partition, it was formatted, and while doing a surface scan, I noticed that there was one bad cluster. 
Now, in this case, I would take the risk with this hard drive as it's not making any weird noises. The surface scan did complete without any additional bad sectors. So yeah, the fact that there is a damaged area on this hard drive isn't ideal, but not the end of the world. And so it's time to conclude this video. So we have in total six working hard drives and 10 hard drives which failed. So yeah, we have a success rate of about 37%. Now I have to say that almost 50% of all of the failures are these Caviar 850 megabyte hard drives here. So I think I got unlucky with those. They were uh, kept in a damp storage area in a garage. So yeah, so yeah, that probably didn't help them all that much. But yeah, that being said, we still have a couple of other hard drives to look at. I'll do that in part two. So yeah, if you like these kinds of videos, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. That would also help out a lot. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.